likely that Hari Seldon has said this a million times, but we'll repeat it anyway. Psychohistory makes it very difficult to forecast the behavior of a single person. It is a collective model based on widespread demographic patterns. Salver Hardin, Gal Dornick's daughter, would leave the planet in pursuit of her mother, and Hari was unaware that Gal Dornick would not arrive on Terminus. The actions of these two individuals had changed Hari's predictive future, and it was a big enough reason why he was so afraid of a special tribe called the Mentalics. Things were fine until a third Mentalic came into play. In the second episode of Foundation Season 2, Gal had a vision of the future where she saw her worst enemy, the mule as a conqueror. During this encounter, the mule mentioned the Age of Empire, which meant that in the mule's timeline, the Imperium had perished. He later mentions a man named Hober Mallow, who attacked the Empire in his own stronghold, which suggests that Hober Mallow became a legendary hero after the fall of the Empire. We're unsure if the mule purposely or unintentionally provided Gaul access to this information. However, the events of the present were affected by this piece of information. The Empire was attacked by Hober Mallow, Salver said to Hari Seldon in the eighth episode of Foundation Season 2. Without delaying, Hari's second digital consciousness posted a sizable banner of Mallow on the vault, pleading with his supporters to find the man and bring him to him as quickly as possible. We only want to know if Hober Mallow would still play a significant role. If Salver hadn't notified Hari about it at this point, the digital consciousness had no means to know an insignificant criminal or the heroism he was capable of. The entire interaction between Salver and Hari inside the vault made one thing obvious. Both of these characters belong to different timelines, or maybe that was what the second season of Foundation wanted us to be convinced of. Or maybe the entire scene was a means to tie up the loose ends on why Hari called for Hober Mallow out of the blue. Just like the heroes of our story, Hober Mallow was an outcast who never fit in. He had trained for the priesthood to promote the doctrines of Hari Seldon's church, but quickly realized it was not his cup of tea. He wanted to shorten the darkness, but in his own ways and religion was definitely not one of them. The master trader yearned for wealth and luxuries, or maybe everything that was against the principles of the church. The authorities found him selling fake relics to believers and revoked his trade license, after which he turned into a full-time fraudster. Nevertheless, Polly Verisef and Brother Constant saved Hober from getting executed and brought him safely to Terminus, so that the prophet could meet the man he had asked for. To get going, a man needs two things. Love and a purpose. Hober discovered one in Constant, and Hari handed him the second. He was charged with negotiating a contract with the Spacers, a race that the Empire had long held as slaves. The Imperium's jump ship required the minds of the Spacers to operate. But Foundation scientists had created superior space navigators with no such restrictions. According to the series, the Spacers required a micronutrient called Opalisk to survive, and the Empire would only trade with them if they gave the Empire 10% of what they received in exchange for the jump ships. But Hari's Foundation found a means to synthesize Opalisk without the Empire's involvement and he sent the master trader to trade the goods in exchange for an ally against the Empire. In the end, Hober designed a ruse with the Spacers. After the fall of the Terminus, everyone on the Imperial fleet quickly realized that the Empire's tyranny has no limits, and therefore, Hari Seldon devised a plan to destroy his Imperial fleet once and for all and take away the toys that the king cherished the most. The spacers on the imperial fleet received their instructions from Shia's center, after which each sheep started to jump into the space occupied by its neighbor, triggering the chain reaction that destroyed the imperial fleet. Brother Day was too egotistical to see that only Belrius could comprehend Hober and Hari's complex strategy. Finally, he lost control and made an attempt to murder Hober, the mythical warrior. However, had managed to persuade an adversary to support him, 
Because of his composure and humor, Rius ultimately made the decision to abandon his allegiance to the Empire and follow the moral path. Salver did really say this first. The Empire was conned by Bel Rius. Brother Day, the person who had tossed Rius into the open area, was switched out for him using Hober's casting mechanism. Brother Day was there, as icy as his heart, and as lifeless as his conscience. However, Hober Mallow and Bel Rius were aware that their time was running out. They had to give their lives in order to end the dictatorship. But martyrs act in this manner. Before meeting their destined end, the two fabled heroes drank the last bottle of wine together. Rius and Hober both passed away on that day. Despite being on opposing sides of the coin, the two men shared a common goal, doing everything in their power to cut the darkness's length. If the mule was correct, then this might be the greatest attack on the Imperium in future centuries, making Hober and Rius the famous heroes in the universe's history. In order to sing the songs of the martyrs, Brother Content is still very much alive. Rius's sweetheart, Glon Kerr, will undoubtedly be pleased with him and perhaps his valiant actions will be depicted on film in following seasons. The Empire is already in decline, and it will take some time before it is reduced to rubble on its own.